obviously you started to talk a bit about web browser a minute ago. So what is the role of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Opus with respect to all the activity that's going on for WebRTC? We, we know that Skype has hired some developers or is hiring developers to address WebRTC issues. Uh, where, where does Opus fit in with this? Yeah, so um, WebRTC and, and RTC Web. Um, uh, so RTC Web is the uh, I, ITF effort, um, and that's uh, the goal of of of, of that uh, standardization effort is to uh, end up with something that can be adopted by the web browsers, and that's a separate part or a separate effort by the IETF as standardizing Opus. Um, so uh, so. Be, be like the people at Skype who've, who've worked in Opus aren't um, much involved with the RTC web effort, um, but but we do know that uh, the the people who are working at RTC web are are big supporters of of Opus, and it seems very likely that Opus will end up in the RTC web standards as as a mandatory to implement um, speech codec uh, next to G711. Okay, so so in other words, basically it becomes part of the web RTC standard. You hope. Yeah, yeah, I think that will happen. Yeah. Um, here's a question for you, and, and, and this was triggered because I'll, I'll tell you, I saw a Cunix demo back at CES where they were doing stereo in an, um, well, I think it was in a Porsche, uh, and the thing that hit me then is uh, how, you know, you're talking to me now on a single channel headset. And I'm talking to you. On, I'm actually talking to you on a speakerphone that's supposed to pick up from all directions. But anyways, uh, mm -hmm. the it's the Yamaha. Um, and the thing is, um, when you talk about stereo in Skype calls, do we really need it? Yeah, that's a good point. So um, I think, let's say, in the call we are having right now, probably it wouldn't make a big difference. Um, but let's say if you on your side or me on my side we would be not having just one person, but a few people sitting around our laptops. Then actually, it would it would make a big difference. Uh, then the other side would have a stereo effect where you would actually be able to hear um, the direction of the person who is speaking. So that helps to separate um, uh, different voices. So so you would more immediately recognize who is talking, and it, it just sounds more natural. Um, that same example uh, holds holds true, especially also in the living room. When Skype is running on a TV and there's a few people sitting in 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 front of the TV, and um, uh, in that case, it would be really nice for the other side to have the stereo effect of hearing who is talking. That that just makes it more natural. And I think even even in a one-to-one -one call, I could imagine it might help to separate background noise from um, from the voice. So if somebody's sitting in a noisy environment, maybe like in an office or, or in a noisy like a bar or something. I think um, having a stereo effect um, might still um, be useful. Okay, okay. I guess, and that in a way ties in with the two and four microphone Skype for TV setups and so on too, I guess. At the moment, the, 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 the microphone or the multi-microphone is just a beamformer, so it doesn't generate stereo. Uh, it's still a, a mono output, um, but, uh, but you never know what we're going to do with that in the future. Right. Um, what does uh, Opus do with respect to sort of network bandwidth demands? I mean, is it, does it have the same or lower bandwidth requirements than current Skype calls, or is there any impact? Yeah, so um, the impact is, is small for the current Skype calls in the sense that uh, the modes that, we, that we'll be using um, um, for Opus um, let's say for the same audio as we're having now, we'll run at the same bit rate um, as as, um, as 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 we would have with Silk, um, very similar. Um, if we go to higher higher quality like stereo and full band, then of course the um, the bit rate will have to go up a little bit, but it isn't a huge increase. So I guess maybe let's say in the highest um, quality, I don't know, there could be like a 30% bit rate increase. But we, but we think that um, that the impact on the quality would would be worth it. Um, if we think that there isn't enough bit, uh, 
bitrate available on the network, then we just scale back down to give a, a similar experience as we had with, um, with, with Silk in the past. Yeah. And you talk about having three modes of the way the Opus works, and I assume that that auto adjusts to the specific conditions of the conversation. That's a good point. Actually, right now, um, right now it's a setting in the API. So at the moment, um, you would have to manually, or well, not manually, but the ap application would have to control the mode, um, and and um, so the application would have to to kind of specify essentially whether it, it thinks the input signal is is voice or music. I know that um, Jean-Marc Valin has been working, he's, he's uh, as you know, one of the, the co-authors of, uh, of the standard. He has been working on a music detector, which would more automatically um, um, uh, do a, a classification of the input signal. And depending on whether it thinks it's music or, 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 or speech, it would choose the mode more automatically. Um, but that's not part of the standard. So, so it's really may... up to the endpoint to determine which mode is used when. Yes, that's correct. Um, and so one, one of the minor complaints I hear about Skype is sort of the time lag delay sometimes. I don't hear it, but some people apparently do hear a bit of a time lag delay in Skype calls. I, I assume the Opus codec, from what I was seeing, helps to address that. Yes, well, so when you're making a Skype call, a, a lot of the time delay is, is not related it's to the codec, unfortunately. So, so we cannot really fix it. Um, um, first of all, when you're really far away um, on on the planet, um, the the internet doesn't go. Uh, it doesn't even go as fast as the light. And even if it would go, that, that would still in, in, um, incur a noticeable time lag. And then um, there are other aspects, like when you're on a Wi-Fi network, it's, it it can also happen that that adds extra delay and, and and other network elements that are outside of the control of Opus. Um, but it is true that indeed uh, Opus has modes that are lower delay than uh, than uh, Silk has. Um, Silk had um, a, a shortest frame length of, of of 20 milliseconds, and a look ahead of five milliseconds. Um, with Opus, um, it goes as low as uh, frames of two and a half milliseconds with 1.25 milliseconds look ahead. So uh, um, it has more than um, a 20 millisecond. Um, reduction in time lag in that case. Um, if you would be using those kind of low, uh, low, low delay modes, then you would also have to um, have to pay for it in in terms of higher bit rates. Okay, okay. I guess a, a final question relates to the uh, Opus is purely an audio codec, uh, and I would assume it complements things like H.264 and VP8 or VP7 for video. Yeah, uh, so you, you you would indeed be able to use um, those video codecs in combination with with Opus. Um, th there isn't like a, um, a a standardized way to to um, to combine the two, but but it doesn't matter. You can always use um, um, any any audio codec with any video codec of of your own choosing. Okay, so they're totally independent of each other in that sense. Yeah, or, or at least you you're, you're always able to use them independently. I guess there there, there are um, standards for um, for storing uh, video and audio signals together. But 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 you um, but when you're making a, a call over the internet, um, you 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 can just as well send the video and audio independently. And and so in that sense, Opus will will work with with any um, video codec. Okay. All right. Well, I think that. That covers my range of questions. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to add. No, not, not much else to add. Uh, so yeah, I think we're in general we are really, really um, happy with with the outcome, and um, and we ex we expect that it will be a, a good thing for for users, um, Skype users, and users of of uh, of rich uh, communi communications everywhere on the internet, and so um, that's that's a good thing. Actually, one question did just occur to me. Um, recently, Skype slash Microsoft submitted something, I guess, to IETF about the whole WebRTC standard, I think. Um, and 
does this fit in as part of just getting Opus adopted as part of that standard? No, so I, I think that's a fairly independent um, effort. And so uh, um, the people at Skype who work at Opus, we haven't been much involved in that. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think it's, it's pretty much unrelated. But I, um, but I, um, but I do know that everyone, both at Skype and and at, at ITF, is 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 definitely hoping that Opus will end up in the um, RTC web standard, and uh, and it looks actually quite quite likely that it will happen. Okay, all right. Well, thanks a lot. Unfortunately, you're.